X Men Apocalypse. Yes, I am so uh, happy okay. to be done yeah. with this franchise. You know, to be honest, I dreaded watching this movie. Uh-huh. I don't remember why, because I don't remember not liking it the first time. Yeah. I dreaded it, and I dreaded it. And I finally watched it. And I didn't think it was that bad. It, it wasn't as bad as I was anticipating it being, even though I'd already seen it. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. I remember not liking it. I remember being disappointed. Uh, watching it again with low expectations, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, I remember being frustrated with the Quicksilver scene because I was like, oh, they're just trying to do what they already did. The, okay, so I have a question about that scene. And you can tell me if I'm wrong. You're wrong. Now, for Quicksilver, uh-huh. he he moves so fast, right, that everything around him just seems slow. Yes. Right? But if we are seeing what he is seeing, as in everything is almost frozen in time, wouldn't he just be moving at normal speed at that point? Wouldn't his normal speed be – like, wouldn't we just see him like – like a regular dude just kind of running and like moving around if everyone else is slowed down to that point well, because that's... they have the the time slow down mm. and they still have him zooming across everywhere I feel like that you're doubling up on his speed at that point in relation to the people does uh, that make sense yeah no i get what you're saying it uh it is a little goofy with the consistency between all that stuff um and like every but, every time he like took a human or a person, yes, it was like just before like the explosion sped up a little bit and it would have got him. Yeah, yeah. It uh, well, like we talked about with Days of Future Past, how is he listening to music? Right, like yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. There's if he's running so fast that he's able to move bullets around, he would have listened to three seconds of that song. Not even. You don't think so? They shot bullets. Think of how long that that explosion would have taken, right? The explosion he started pretty much right at the beginning, and yeah, then but, all the way to the end. Yeah, but in Days of Future Past, it wouldn't have been three seconds. It would have been less than one. Yeah, that's true. For them, yeah, you're right. For them to shoot a bullet and for that bullet to travel whatever it was twenty feet and him to do mm-hmm. all that, it wouldn't have been one second. So yeah. it's just no. You're- there's a lot of uh, stylistic things for Quicksilver that uh, really you just have to look overlook, which is fine. Like it's not like bad. It's not to me. I don't find it that distracting, but it's not. It's no, hard to, it's not. to poke at without it falling apart. You know. It just makes the scene more entertaining because yeah. it's 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 like a uh, I don't know like a. I don't even know. Dude, I'm so out of it. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, a, con- like a controlled chaos, like a, like a lighthearted chaos. I don't know if that's... I don't know what you're trying to say. But Jeff, I don't either. Jeff Gann says, just give X-Men over to the MCU. Which I agree and I don't agree. I don't know. I would Honestly, I would like to see Marvel get the X-Men property back. And make oh, it. I think they pretty much have, right? Yes. So, <laughs> Marvel get the Marvel the X Men property back and make its own universe. I don't know if I necessarily need X Men in the MCU, but I would really like to see Marvel make X Men movies. Well, I got no problem with it being in the MCU if they still let it be its own thing. You know, don't overcrowd it. Let it let it exist in the same universe, uh-huh. and maybe you can have the 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 references to superheroes but yeah. let them let them breathe let them do their own thing i just don't know if it's gonna mix well on screen there's already so many characters like there was like 28 characters something like that that all had uh, a showcase in infinity war and i think it's going to be even more in endgame Is it that that many yeah like the if you look at the poster and see how many people are featured there's so yeah. many characters and if you're talking about adding an X-Men, even just the core X-Men, that's still like, like 10, 10 characters. Yeah. 
if you were gonna add some X Men to the MCU, who who would you pick? If you got to pick like five guys, are we? So my opinion is Wolverine should take a break for a while because there's it's gonna yeah. be really hard for anyone to match what uh, Hugh Jackman did. So while I think he's one of the better characters, I don't think he should be in the MCU for a long time. With that said, yeah. Cyclops, uh, Nightcrawler, yeah. Gambit. Um, I don't really like Storm. I think Jean Classic. Grey is kind of boring. Uh, Rogue is not that interesting. Like no, at least what they like did it. in the movies. Um, you would do Cyclops though? Yeah, I, yeah, I love Cyclops. I think he's a really good character. Um, and I don't think the MCU has a lot of morally strong characters. A lot of them mm-hmm. are. Um, morally gray except for like captain america he's kind of the only one who is that you know do the right thing no matter what type personality so i think having cyclops in there would be interesting um i think professor x would be hard to bring in without patrick stewart um i would like to see magneto but michael fassbender's magneto not um ian mckellen ian mckellen i think he would be good but uh, like, how do you make that work if you don't have uh, Professor X in there? You know, like, so I don't know. I, I it's hard to have one without the other. Yeah. So I I do think I would like to see Marvel's version of X Men. I don't know if I want to see it in the MCU because I think it would be difficult to make it work with what they've already done. Had they done it from the beginning, then I would be on board. I wouldn't have a problem with it. But adding it in seems like it might have already passed that opportunity. Yeah. But Yeah, no, I agree with that. Rewatching Apocalypse, uh-huh. I was I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was done way better than I remembered. Even the stuff I didn't like with Quicksilver scene copying the first one trying to like run off of that momentum. Seeing it again, I was like, "Oh, you know what? This isn't that bad." Like it's it's a pretty fun scene. It kind of breaks it up. It was it was good. The uh, the one thing though that bothered me both times, seeing it the first time, watching it again, was their how they ended Days of Future Past and started uh, Apocalypse with everyone in a reverse situation everyone at an opposite end of where they left off. So you go through days of future past characters, all go in arcs and go on this journey and get to a place. Then you start apocalypse and they all have reversed or flipped or flopped and are in a completely different spot in their life. Yeah. And I, I listened well, to the, it was like 10 years later. Yeah. But I listened to the commentary and that was all an intentional choice that Brian Singer thought was an interesting one, which frustrated me even more because it was just like, oh, well, I hated this. I hated that you didn't, you didn't kind of respect what happened with the well, other one to continue yeah. the story, and then just like change it. Um, another thing that I didn't like about Apocalypse was uh, Jennifer Gar- not Garner, why not? Lawrence? Lawrence, yeah. Why are you so quiet? Are you falling asleep on me? No, I kind of sat back. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Jennifer Lawrence being the hero, I didn't like. I didn't. She's the the worst character, and they are trying so hard to make you think like she's the best, and it just doesn't work. That's only because it's Jennifer Lawrence. No, I know it's not the character; it's the actor. It, and it's her. When same with uh, like Will Smith. Will Smith kind of being forced to be the like the main character in suicide squad it was just like no like you know or in bright will smith in bright being the main character because of who he is is like no you're the the character written is not the main character don't take their popularity and force that onto the character because now you're hurting your movie yeah but what did you like about apocalypse I to be honest, I actually really liked 
all the Professor X uh, Moira stuff. Yes, mm-hmm. I thought that was that was good. Um, I love pretty much everything with Magneto. I, I think he's one yeah. of the best characters. Yeah. Um, I didn't like. To be honest, I didn't really like the actual apocalypse character and stuff like that. Yeah, no. I didn't like. Uh, I didn't like Storm. I did not like uh, what's the other one named Psylocke. Angel was fine. Um, I liked that Magneto was a part of that. Like that would make sense if he's yeah. gathering, but it, it almost seemed like first he was just like picking the first mutants he came across, and then was like, "Hold on, I need someone actually powerful." Yeah. Like there's got to be better than those three, right? Well, I think it didn't matter for him um i know he can exemplify or what it magnify their powers but like well i think they're kind of um well so jeff gann said apocalypse is only five six what a joke which i agree i think he's too small he wasn't really an imposing figure uh that i think oh wait like he was really five six i don't know if um uh oh what's his name why can't i remember his name now it's the guy from uh he's in the new star wars movies no oscar isaac yeah oscar isaac he's not that tall but oh i forgot he is apocalypse huh yeah he's um i did i I told i totally forgot about that yeah so he's he's short but the character is not not imposing at all they uh brian singer kept talking about how he was his um from it's five and a half, Xerxes, no Xerxes from Three Hundred. He kept calling him that, and it's not the same. Even though that no. the guy who played him was rather short, he was imposing on screen. You felt like, wow, this guy is larger than life. And Apocalypse never came across that way. He seemed mm-hmm. old. He seemed slow. He didn't seem that threatening. He just had a lot of powers, which I get it. You, right? Like, did you want him to be more of a Thanos? Thanos is so much better of a imposing oh, well, character. Well, he's better for sure, yeah. Um, well, th- I just mean physically. Like, yeah. his, like Thanos is equally as menacing, right, with his abilities. But he feels like he's also equally, or he's m- way more threatening, uh, just his presence. And it's yeah. not because he's so aggressive or s- always fighting or like, trying he's just like larger than life and not afraid and that's what they try to do with apocalypse but it never uh visually comes across that way yeah i just i didn't i didn't care for that at all it just didn't interest me yeah um but he i don't know i i really don't like brian singer well, no, definitely not after the, was it the open secret? Open secret, yeah. But watching the the um, uh, the audio commentary of this and hearing all the things that he was excited about doing is like yeah. all the stuff that I hated. Yeah, so Jeff Gann says, Tom Hardy is 5'9 and had three inch lifts but still felt imposing as Bane in uh, The Dark Knight Rises, which I agree. He Oh, for sure. There's a lot of things that you can do, like the way you film a character, you know, you put it lower, you aim the camera up and you just make them feel like they're threatening the audience that they have to do that for Vin Diesel. He's only five, two. (laughs) That's why that scene where he goes face to face with the rock. That's so crazy. It just doesn't look right. It's so stupid. They have to film from the ground. They have the cameraman laying on the ground filming up i don't know whose idea that was but that person i guarantee it was it was it was like uh, it was so many bad ideas floating around (laughs) and you know vin diesel on the rock refuting the whole time they're like this this is one thing we can agree on is this angle for this scene they're like yeah let's do it (laughs) i have mutual respect for you we can do this scene they they're standing in front of each other and then one takes a side step (laughs) To be equal, shoulder to shoulder, and then the other one takes a step. So now they're 
back to back <laughs> and they're like just talking to each other like they're talking nose to nose and it it's uh, it's funny i never thought i would that, be friends with a yeah. cop <laughs> Jeez, yeah um so i don't know how big you are on on other podcasts but conan o'brien has a new podcast have you oh, heard that one i have not do you like conan o'brien i'm not sure he's all right um it's by it's like beef he's definitely an acquired taste it's like friendless or something what's it called uh conan o'brien needs a friend needs a friend yeah it's it's actually really funny because it's it's kind of just real people you know and he's got like one guest per episode and they just talk about whatever and one of the episodes i don't even know how but that scene in that movie comes up (laughs) it's so ridiculous and it was the funniest thing just hearing him talk about it how even how he's like this is the stupidest thing yeah like it's who thought this was okay yeah it it doesn't make any sense but uh, i love it (laughs) back to apocalypse uh they they bring up in the audio commentary about the joke of the third x-men movie always being the worst oh i hated that and he said it's not so much a dig at x3 which complete lie it 100 percent was days of future past was undoing everything x3 did like was brian singer on days of futures past yes Uh. Uh, i don't know if he directed it i don't think he did i think that was matt uh i have to look that up who directed at least we can all agree the third movie is the worst but he said so he was saying always the worst that it it wasn't just a dig at them but it was a dig at themselves but it felt so tone deaf that i don't know if he really recognized that he was making fun of the third trilogy of that or the third maybe the, the it was trilogy. like he was making fun of himself like a dig at his own movie that they're in being the third movie well that's what they said in the commentary but i don't believe it oh you think it was about x-ray yeah and that makes sense that makes plenty of sense uh yeah so brian singer directed days of future past and it was matt um oh what why can't i remember his name it's probably not even matt i'm probably just making something up matthew vaughn who did first oh, class yeah matthew vaughn. that's right that's right um but yeah so apocalypse everything brian singer did intentionally that he thought was cool i pretty much hated i was like oh this was a bad choice what what else was his highlights um i I don't remember (laughs) honestly i don't there's nothing specific that stands out beyond the stuff that we've already talked about i i really didn't like well not that i didn't like it i didn't care for i didn't care for wolverine in this one actually uh yeah as it felt felt uh, out of place what was it um weapon x weapon x yeah yeah, yeah. well because i was gonna say x22 and i was like no that's logan so there was a couple things that Mm. i i I didn't like right i didn't like they they saw him and then he left and then like i think it was cyclops who made the comment like i hope hope that's the last time we see this guy again or something like that like that's a weird thing to say like in general have you, I know you, they're making a a reference. They're, they're well, they're yeah. making a joke at people's knowledge of the future. Um, have you noticed though that you hate that stuff a lot more now? The more I point it out to you, like before, <sighs> you used to complain. You're like, why? Who cares? Like, it's fine. Well, it doesn't bother me. Though. And uh, then you now you hate it, which I agree. It's terrible. Brian, uh, most of the time, it's gotten like that. Yeah. Yeah, Brian Singer making bad choices in his personal life. He's made a bad lot of choices bad choices. Is putting it lightly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. I've made bad choices. This guy's just bad, 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 bad choices. Double bad choices, the, Jeff. Double, double bad. Yeah. So the other I, problem. He got taken off of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody because he got uh, more allegations brought up against him. Oh, because his name is still on it. Because I just started today and I saw his name pop up. I was like, yeah. oh, I forgot it was him. Well, he started it and then they okay. fired him and someone else took over because okay. of more allegations. I hope I hope it was Matthew Vaughn. Matthew Vaughn taking over for him? I don't know who took <laughs> over for him. 
Um, no, but the other part I didn't like was there was like a scene where uh, Jean Grey was like calming Logan's mind or mm-hmm. you know whatever. Yeah, that's fine. But there was something inherently creepy about it because we, we know yeah. in the future there's like the love triangle where right, yeah. I was Cyclops mm-hmm. and Jean Grey and Wolverine. And I felt like they were almost alluding to that. Yeah, but she's also like a teenager. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the you vibe know, it was putting out. It made me uncomfortable. I was like, this is weird. Yeah, Brian Singer talked about... I didn't about pick up on that the first time. How? That, that was, he was really looking forward to doing that scene? Well, he was talking about how it was like a, a sexual moment for... Uh, but it shouldn't be. How old is Jean Grey? Like 16? At that point, yeah. But he, yeah, he kept talking about how attractive she was and how like... I'm trying to remember what the sexual moment was, but it was like Does uncomfortable. Does Brian Singer find women attractive? I, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> Not according to the allegations. I mean, I guess he could both, but that's true. It was just like very creepy. Um, it was, and I don't remember. I don't remember picking up on that the first time. In fact, I don't remember Wolverine really much at all the first time. Yeah, and I just I saw it. and I was like, this is well. The thing that bothers me about all of that is. That would leave an imprint on Cyclops and on Jean Grey. And it doesn't in X-Men 1. He's brand new. He doesn't, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah. They, it's like they've never met before. Which obviously X-1 came out before. So like you can't predict the future. But when you go back in time and you make them have this interaction, that would be, you know, memorable. Because... yeah. Yeah, they watched him massacre all these people. Right so in front you of saw him. this crazy man slicing people up. Yeah, it and would, then you like had to like intervene. Yeah, and you set him free. Like, yeah, you wouldn't forget that. But they do, and that's <laughs> it's just like a dumb, a dumb uh, Easter egg or callback or reference or homage, as Brian Singer calls everything. An homage. Ugh. <laughs> everything was an homage to I something else. I hate the else. word homage. Yeah. But uh, no, the, some of the stuff I really enjoyed in Apocalypse is Michael Fassbender. Mm-hmm. Every time he was on screen, he was great. The yep. the moment with his wife and his daughter dying is heartbreaking every time. And it feels like you are watching a real person, not a character, not an actor playing a character. Not mm-hmm. It doesn't feel manipulative. It feels honest. It feels earnest. It feels earned. It just is so strong. And then when he comes back and he's threatening everyone and he's like, I, I love that when he's so calmly letting everyone know he's about to kill all of them. Yeah. That is such a good moment. And then apocalypse shows up and I think waters it down kind of yep. oh, takes away from sure. it. I don't know. Cause like, so apocalypse shows up and kills everyone, right? Like, so you don't want, you don't want Magneto to do it. Because it's no, kind of unfair. But you, but you don't blame him. Yeah. Well, so you don't want Magneto to do it because it's kind of unfair for him to do it, right? For him to come and murder all these guys for doing something right. And it would make him not likable. Then you have Apocalypse shows up and does it so uh, callously, so careless. Yeah, casually. So like casually. Like and he just murders them. But it takes away all the emotional weight of their death because apocalypse doesn't care and it doesn't it doesn't make apocalypse seem like a worse guy because he apocalypse shows up and murders strangers but Mm -hmm. uh magneto was about to murder his friends and so the yeah by switching the roles or by switching it to apocalypse being the murderer it deflates everything that was built up before it so i think what they should have done what would have been better is allow Magneto to one, either kill him or make the decision not to. You don't take that decision out of his hands. You leave it to him and then Apocalypse shows up either to the aftermath or to challenge him to do it himself and then complete it. And that be the part that makes Apocalypse the bad, like the yeah. ultimate bad guy. But taking and the- the thing that goes along with that is, is he, he, he's going to have this, this, uh, uh, inability to have the closer he needed. Yeah. Right. It's not just going to be like, oh, well, I wanted them dead. They're dead. So I'm good now. Like, yeah. 
he needed to be the one to do it. And that was taken. Like, that's not something you just well, that, forget about. That's what it does that's to the audience. Never, too. Ever have. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? They, there's so much uh, emotional investment on the audience's behalf towards Magneto at that moment. And then so taking away that closure from the character is taking away the closure from the audience. Had Magneto been convinced not to do it or to do it, you would have at least had that wrapped up. But they kind of took that away from you. The satisfaction of either it happening or him forgiving and moving on is just also, not there. How horrible of a person do you have to be in your life that you witness someone save another man's life? That he would not have been able to do had he not been a mutant mm. with that, you know, very specific power. And then you go turn him in? Well, okay, so like, if Bin Laden would have saved you from something, would you have protected him for that? Like say you're you're at work and you find out you're working with Bin Laden, but he saved your life. Would you okay, keep but that under changed? Is is Bin Laden changed? I need to know. <laughs> you, yeah, you you're best friends with him, and then you find out that it's Bin Laden. Then I probably am not friends with. You no, know, it's different. I'm not gonna. It's not. I'm not gonna have <laughs> it, this conversation. No, but it's not though, because Ma- you're gonna make me say I like Bin Laden, and I don't like it. <laughs> well, I was That's hoping true. you would recognize that you should turn in Bin Laden. And make it more reasonable for the guy to turn in Magneto because Magneto was a terrorist pretending to be someone else hiding out. So for them to figure it out makes sense for them to to alert the authorities. But apparently, you would help Bin Laden escape. No, I I would probably go along the lines of we're not friends anymore, but I ain't gonna say nothing. See, I wouldn't. I don't think I would. No, I don't know. I really, I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to say. I I could see. I mean, Bin Laden is a bit of a stretch, but I mean, Magneto was a complete terrorist. You know, like he in uh, Days of Future Past, he was not a good guy. I guess the 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 reason it's a it's a weird comparison is because Magneto is intentionally a likable person with redeeming qualities. I don't know that Bin Laden had any redeeming qual redeemable qualities. I never met the guy. I would. Yeah, I don't he either. Seems That's like why he, I'll leave it open. Like he, maybe he. <laughs> seems like he wouldn't, but maybe he does. I mean, every. Pretty sure. Every he we like really liked video games. Everyone who gets people to follow them, are, is likable in some sense, in some s- situation. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, but anyways, you would protect Bin Laden, basically the no. moral of the story. Uh. You Perhaps. should get kicked out of America. <laughs> um, I I should. But yeah, so for them to to tell them makes sense. I like I don't I don't have a problem with that. I think that that tracks. You know, like I guess that's true. I didn't and think it, about it like that. And it's also wasn't just him, the guy who was saved, who could have done it. Other people saw. Oh no, I don't know if they ever specified, did they? No, they never specified, I, but that's what I'm my, saying. I, I made the assumption it was just someone who thought. Yeah, well, he could have told someone else. He could have been like, hey, I think that guy might be Magneto. You know, like there's a lot of, there's a lot more breakdown than just the guy whose life got saved. But it's such a, such a good moment, you know, with yeah Magneto feeling betrayed, feeling like I've been trying to redeem myself and you guys won't let it go but it makes sense because he was a complete terrorist, you know, like I guess my original stance mm-hmm. was more based, not on the fact that they recognize him as Magneto as a, you know, in a terrorist. I, I thought it was more like we're turning in a mutant. No, is they knew who it was. He was on the and run. That, that Now that definitely makes more sense. That's why I was saying bin Laden because he was, you know, he remember at the end of Days of Future Past, he brought that whole stadium and uh, yeah. put it around the White House and was uh, just doing all that crazy stuff. That he was on the run for that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. But uh, yeah, I think Apocalypse was a weak character. 
I don't think he was fleshed out. I don't think he was imposing enough. I think Magneto nope. is the best character in the whole movie. I think Jennifer Lawrence is distracting and they're the way they're trying to like force her down your throat that she's like this role model and hero to Oh mutants. yeah, with the posters and it's so dumb. Especially knowing like that. that she didn't even want to be in the makeup that she was like refused to be in the makeup and that was part of her story. Is, is it really? That one of part of the story for uh, Raven or for Mystique is that she is accepting who she is and, you know, gonna be a role model of don't hide who you really are. Like, that's her progression. But in real life, Jennifer Lawrence hated the makeup so much that she didn't want to be a part of the movies. And that's why she was in, why she looked like Jennifer Lawrence way more than she ever looked like Mystique. Mm. And the character, the character should want to be Mystique. Like that's, that was her whole journey in Days of Future Past. And she just reverted and was like, I don't want to be that, you know? And it's just like, I don't know, it's so dumb. Um, but I like um, Ty Sheridan. I have a question about but who's that? He's Cyclops. Oh, yeah, no, I thought he was great. Real quick about Mystique. So her natural form is blue. Mystique, right? Yeah. So, so I think she so it's I think it's c- kind of complicated because she looked like a little girl first, right. then developed her mutant powers and turn blue and then realize that she can transform but her that that would mean she chooses this jennifer lawrence looking person right that's yes. not even how if that's not based on anyone i don't know right yeah. she's not mimicking someone yeah. and then later she what bases herself on rebecca romain stamos yeah that's <laughs> i don't know no, I, it's just like, why is that like her her default non-mystique, you know? Yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, I, like I think if you... If your natural was blue, but like how do you... Who decides what the default is? Or how does that get well, decided? That, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because... Like where did that come from? Mm-hmm. She, as far as I know, she can't just make up a, a an appearance right it it must be that it takes effort to stay as someone else and so like holding up a weight right you have to put in the effort and when you set it down the effort's gone she reverts back to the blue no that, i get that but i'm saying where does jennifer lawrence come from like, why does she look like that when she's a human? Yeah, I don't know. But it must be, I would assume, someone that she knew or is, like, kind of copying, like, someone in her family, even if it's subconsciously. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, no, I do. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah. I uh, guess it would make sense to identity and then stick with it so people know it's you when you're not mystique yeah. or when you're not blue. I, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it's apocalypse. Apocalypse is better than it gets credit for. It's not great, but none of the movies in my opinion are Logan is really good. Days of future past is a lot of fun, but mm-hmm. none of them are like great movies. And so going back and rewatching apocalypse is kind of like, Oh, you know what? This is actually not bad. It's better than most. And Yeah, it is. Where it falls short, it it's kind of its own fault, but like you can kind of get over it. I like um excluding the the Quicksilver scene in question. Mm-hmm. I like Quicksilver as a character. I think it's funny. Well, Evan Peters is a really like charismatic. He's got a lot of funny actor. little lines and stuff like that. Yeah. I didn't think they needed like to put in the father son dynamic without resolving that at all. It seemed kind of forced. Yeah, why didn't they resolve that? I don't know. I didn't. I don't care for that. Um, yeah, it just seemed kind of distracting just to put it in there. Like, I guess it was their way of getting him back into the story, but it felt it seems like they could have done that another way. 
Yeah, they could have just had him want to get back with Professor X. Yeah, for whatever reason. Even if they, even if he just saw him and it was like, oh yeah, I remember that. We were working yeah. together and now he's back. We should help stop him. Or like having guilt about, oh, I let him free and look at what all the problems he caused. I need to be the one to help stop him now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No, I agree. That's how it should have been. Um, but his fight with Apocalypse was was enjoyable. But Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. It, I don't know. I Apocalypse was just such a bad character that it, that I liked Quicksilver fighting him. I didn't like how they neutered Apocalypse. You know what I mean? Like they Apocalypse was not ready for anything until he got attacked, and he then he figured it out instantly. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, I don't know. Like it, while it tracks consistently, it uh, is not a fun character trait to watch. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's like he gets outsmarted, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, and that exactly. doesn't, it doesn't make you feel like he's threatening. It just makes you feel like he's dumb, but he can figure it out. You know what I mean? Like he's, he just has, um, he doesn't seem good at it. He just seems like he's on God mode and it doesn't yeah. matter. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not an interesting character. Where like Thanos, right? right? He is outsmarting the Avengers mm-hmm. as well as... He's one step ahead of everyone. Yeah, as well as being able to, you know, fight them and overpower them. Like, he's just so much better of a developed character than Apocalypse is. And I think, and again, I, I haven't read the comics, but I think Apocalypse is more threatening than Thanos is. I think Apocalypse is scarier than Thanos. Huh. Yeah, maybe. But he's just he's just a weak character in this. He's muted. But uh yeah. Um I, Let's see. I I know you're a big fan of Nightcrawler, so you uh, enjoyed that, I assume. I I like Nightcrawler. I think he's way better in X2 than he is in this. Um he like he's, again there was another one of those things where Brian Singer was like let's make him the exact opposite cuz that will be fun yeah uh and he that's what he was and like it made sense for him to kind of be unsure and goofy and like insecure Dorky. but yeah. it, it was just kind of boring um seeing him not be good at everything you know what i mean like i don't know he's I wasn't like the biggest fan of him, but I think he did a good job. But I, I feel like again, for him to kind of be surprising to everyone in X two mm-hmm. is dumb because yeah. they knew him really well in this. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. What did you what did you think about the blob? What the two seconds that he was in it? Yeah. Uh, I thought, I, I thought at least that I was, assume that that's him. They don't. I don't think they even call him out. But it's they do call him that in the commentary. They call him the Blob. Oh, do they? Okay. Mm-hmm. But uh, again, he was in X Men Origins. You know, yeah, like, I like that. It, it felt weird to have these characters show up as um like a reference or like a shout out or a fan service type thing. Do but you think it was hurt. a fan service to Origins or the fact that they just wanted Not to put to another mutant in there and the Blob is a fighter, so they they put him in? Yeah, I, I don't think it had anything to do with Origins. I think they were like, yeah. let's not worry about Origins just so we can put it in, Um, which I don't like. I don't like when they disregard their own rules and consistency just to be cheeky, interesting. I don't know what to call it. But I don't know it. It's 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 fun to watch. You know, it's not good, but it is fun. It's fun to watch. It's it's almost more just frustrating to talk about because then that's yeah. when you start realizing how inconsistent all nine movies are. Yeah, know? yeah, no, for sure. It's Talk- like such a missed opportunity had they just thought about it and really planned it out. Yeah, well, that that's the biggest thing. Every. They didn't seem to have any plan. 
nothing nothing that followed one of the movies seemed to care about what was established before it yeah and each and every time they're just like ah, it's just comics in the comics they don't follow a consistent thing but that's what makes comics not enjoyable at least to me it's yeah. i want to have a story i want to you know watch this character do this thing and if it's gonna happen again i want that to be the same character it doesn't have to mean he doesn't change he doesn't grow he doesn't have things that happen to him but i want to be able to mean have the first movie that i watch mean something to the second one i want that investment in that time to be worth it and these is just like oh this this erases that and this makes yeah. this not fit anymore and this it's like the more that I watch, the less everything else means and just gets muddied and it's like I don't know what's going on and it's just it's just bad. They don't they don't care. Like to make it all in the same universe and not to care to have it be the same is just offensive, you know? It's frustrating. Yeah. It's but, so uh, frustrating. Anything else about apocalypse? I think uh, um Nah, I think that covers it. Yeah, I th- like it's good. There's a lot of weird stuff, but it's better than I think people remember. Like, I think I thought X Men One was going to be one of my favorites, and it's not. Uh, this I thought it was going to be one of the worst, and it's not. Like, it kind of swapped positions for me. Yeah, those so two. So, what does your list look like then? Well, let's finish this one up, and then we can talk about what our ranking is in our next episode. But uh, yeah, so okay. like us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook. Um, we will be back next week with a new series uh i haven't talked to taylor about it but we will (laughs) we'll do that off the air just to make sure but coming up we'll start a new series um no more x-men i will be no we're done we physically can't do them they're they're done so happy to not talk about this anymore until at least until marvel picks it up but we got some time yeah so but thanks for listening and we'll be back soon